Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today I got Cara with me and we're doing everything chicken. Everything chicken. Chicken salad, chicken sandwich, chicken parmesan, chicken cordon bleu. And we do have... We have peach cobbler which is not chicken but it goes well with chicken. Yes indeed. Y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is going to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pot line, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like the did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, Kara, here we are. Second season, second episode, yep. and it's everything chicken. Yes, it is. And what we're going to start off today is chicken salad. Mm -hmm. And we started with a rotisserie chicken from yeah. your local department store. Mm -hmm. And I've got some cool ingredients to go with it. But I want yeah. to tell everybody a little bit about chicken. Chicken is the most common type of poultry in the world. Um, it's the most eaten. Um, it's more healthy than red meat with lower concentrations of cholesterol and saturated fat. So uh, compared to other things, it's good for oh, you. Yeah. The United Nations estimate there's 19 billion chickens on the earth today. That's a oh, lot wow. of chickens. That's a lot of chickens. <laughs> Outnumbering oh, humans two to one. Oh, well, that's a good thing because, you know, we eat a lot of chicken. Chickens raised specifically for food are called broilers. Mm -hmm. um, and chicken must be cooked at 165 degrees to prevent foodborne illnesses. Right, like salmonella. Exactly, yeah. and so your turkey's probably right there with that 165 yeah. of poultry. If you put the chicken in the freezer whole, you can keep it for 12 months. Okay. If you put it in, in parts mm -hmm. of chicken, it's nine months. And if you put cooked chicken in the freezer, it's three to four months on okay. chicken. Gotcha, yeah, because I tend to, mine tends to stay in there, I think, and it gets a little freezer burnt sometimes. Well, well chickens come a long way, y'all, so I want to talk about, you know, chicken has come around, chicken stock, chicken broth, chicken gravy now, you just dump it on mm -hmm. in there and do it. You got chicken in a can. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure some of these have been around about forever. about my speed right there. Now, here's one that's classic. It's chicken a la king. My great grandma used to cook us this mm. in a rush and pour it over toast bread. Okay. And it was like the best thing in the whole world. That was mm. just, I it's still like eat it to this chicken day. And white gravy? Yeah, chicken okay. and white gravy. It's mushrooms and olives and a few little things in there. And um, it, yeah. it's, but what I'm going to tell you, when you're cooking something in chicken, put mm. this in there because it has so much flavor. Put mm -hmm. this in your chicken soup, stew, stuff. Okay. It's got so much flavor in there. It's unbelievable. Mm. But what I want to talk about is I was in the food business in the 90s when the boneless, skinless chicken breast came out mm -hmm. and the public was just starting. It was called Bubba's. It's in okay. Gonzales on the airline. Um, they sold plenty shrimp po' boys, catfish, and that chicken breast on a wheat bread with mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato. They oh, would line wow. up around the building. Uh, yeah. That was the early 90s, uh, late yeah. 80s, early, early 90s, and that just was coming out. Mm -hmm. And we sold so many of them. I got to do one for you. Okay. So what we did is we would have piles of it, y'all, and mm -hmm. you would take the chicken and you pounded it. We, they would call it Bubba Dust. Well, we use Uncle Larry's. Okay. And you season. You got to you ought to hear yeah, that I in there. Oh, it was cases and cases. They, yes, was there they was in there beating it. It was it was incredible. It was it was really incredible, y'all. But the amount we sold mm -hmm. and it was new. It was something new yeah. in the nineties. It was brand new. So how did he cook it? How did they prepare Well it was flame brawled. Okay. Now we can't flame brawl in here, but we got Uncle George. Oh. 
Thank goodness for Uncle George. Mm. Uncle George, my buddy. So we're going to put him on here and let him go. All right. That's the coolest pretty thing easy. since sliced bread, I'm going to tell you. That's pretty easy. <laughs> so, and all they did was put it on mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato, and life and was good. It's so simple, that, that, but it just sounds like it's so good. Okay, chicken salad. Yeah, so I am picking this chicken here. And this is just a rotisserie chicken, like you said. And there's already a lot of flavor on this rotisserie chicken. They use rotisserie seasonings. They probably marinate that. They probably do marinate it. I'm taking the skin off because the skin, um, even though the skin is good, we don't really want it in our chicken salad because it will, you know, it's kind of rubbery. You know, so you we don't, don't really chew want on that. that. We don't want to chew on that. We want to be chewing on the chicken. <laughs> so to this chicken that I am picking, we're going to add a half a cup of mayonnaise which all chicken salad, you know, it starts with a good mayo. <laughs> and then we also have some finely chopped celery. And you can see it's chopped pretty fine. Again, you don't want a lot of big It took me about a chicken. day and a half to chop it that time. Oh my goodness. And then to that, we're also gonna get some sliced green onions we have here. And that's gonna be a lot of flavor just in itself with the celery and the onions. We have two teaspoons of lemon juice and a little bit of salt. And we're going to mix that in with the chicken. So I've gotten, you know, a pretty good bit picked here. And I'm kind of trying to make it to where it's smaller pieces. Right. You know, so it'll mix better if it's in smaller pieces. Well, let me tell you. Uh, a chicken salad mm -hmm. is chicken as a main ingredient. Other common ingredients may include mayo, hard-boiled eggs, celery, onion, pepper, pickles, and a variety of mustards. Mm -hmm. Like tuna and the egg salad. It may be served on top of lettuce, tomato, avocado, mm -hmm. and it's made with typically leftover chicken. Yeah. First found in a southern cookbook, The Carolina Housewife by Sarah Rutledge in 1847. Okay. The first restaurant to serve chicken salad was Town and Meats in Wakeford, Rhode Island in 1863. Oh, wow. I remember that. Oh, well, yeah. He mixed leftover chicken with mayo, tarragon, and grapes. Mm -hmm. So it's come a long way, I gotta yeah, say. Yeah, I've, I've seen it with grapes, <laughs> I've seen it with fruit, so there's like a lot of good variations with that. It became so popular that the market was converted into a delicatessen. So that's how many people wanted to come and see oh, it. Oh, wow. Um, what goes with chicken salad? Green salad, fruit platters, cheese platters, everything. vegetable platters, baguettes, chips, dill pickle, everything you can everything. think of. Yep. Let's see. We should be pulling this guy out. Mm -hmm. with I'm going to go ahead and keep mixing up my little chicken salad. And I mix the mayo and the chicken first to get it kind of blended. Oh, yeah. Before I start putting all the veggies in. I'm going to get those green onions in here. Your green onions. How do you in. like chicken salad? You like them bread, toast? I like them anything. Anything. I yeah. put it on a shoe and I'd probably eat it. Mm -hmm. I would too. You, it's just good. I'm telling you. Just get the laces out and oh, go. Oh, yeah. Just, just go for it. <laughs> So All right, I juice. guess y'all can see this possibly. We're going to be. I'm going to move this out of your way. Pulling this chicken out. And what I've learned from this chicken, this style, because we used to do that on flame broth, mm -hmm. you got to put the butter on it. Ah. So you put the butter to it. That looks yummy. You put the, a little bit more seasoning on it, and you put this on, on the sandwich, and I'm going to tell you what. Y'all ain't gonna get to taste it, but they are. So y'all hang on, we're coming right. right back. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. 
Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. We, right. um, we, we got so much going on, we're going so fast. But we do. Tell us we about the drink. We have to have a little drink. That's what I'm thinking. All right, so I'm just going to make, this is called a Bellini, and this is an Italian mix cocktail with Prosecco, which is just like a sparkling white wine. And normally a Bellini is made with a fruit puree, and normally it's peach. But they didn't have any peach, so... We, I tried mango. and this gone is actually, mango. Going mango, that's right. So it's actually really, really good. And this is a nectar, so it's a little bit thicker than a juice. You can also take a fruit and puree it in your blender and use that also in a Bellini. So. Well, show them how you make it. I'm gonna. So we're gonna take a little bit of the Prosecco and I'm gonna pour it down the side. Let it foam just well, a little. Well, that's bubbly. It is. It's like and we're champagne. Let it foam just a little. Then we're going to take a little bit of the nectar. I like a little more. I like a little sweeter. So I'm going to pour that in down the side. And then I'm just going to top it off with just a little bit more Prosecco. And that is it. I'm digging that it. That is it. And you can garnish it with fruit. Gotcha. So if you want to put like a cherry in there. Big to piece make it of pretty. pineapple Big or piece something of pineapple, there. Piece mango. of mango. <laughs> yeah, but it's super easy and it's really refreshing. So it's I'm a digging good little. It. I'm oh, digging. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got us a drink. Why yep. don't we start rolling on our chicken parmesan? So this is a little bit of study that me and the wife kind of went through and done, and we was uh, fiddling around with it, mm -hmm. but um. You tell them what we're doing. All right, so it looks like you got a chicken breast here, and it's been pounded flat. Looks like you took all your aggression out on Just the poor chicken breast with the mallet. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Put it in a Ziploc bag. After a bag. bad day, this is what you want to cook after a bad day. If you don't put it in the bag, it will be all over the house. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll get all in your mallet. Too. Don't, don't use the... Um, the, the pointed side, you want to use the flat side. Yeah. And if you don't have one of these, you can take a cup or a, a coffee cup or something and just pound it out. If you so, have a rolling pin, you could use a rolling pin on it. So Two, two things that that does. Mm -hmm. Number one, makes it season well. Number right. two, it's it, cooking less time. Mm -hmm. And it also is more tender from hitting it. Gotcha. So you've already salted and peppered this chicken breast on both sides. And I'm just going to take a little bit of flour and I'm going to pour it into the sifter. And it kind of sifts out kind of quick. So I'm That's just going to kind of move it over. It is fancy. And then I'm just going to sift it out a little bit onto the breast. Kind of rub it in just a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some on the other side. Your oil is now ready. All right. And so, while you're getting that together, I want to tell some folks about chicken parmesan. Okay. Is a dish that consists of breaded chicken breast mm -hmm. covered in tomato sauce and mozzarella, parmesan, or provolone cheese. Okay. Ham or bacon sometimes are added. Mm hmm In America, it's known as chicken parm. Chicken parm, yeah. You can do a or, lot with it. You can. Mm -hmm. In originated in the northeast U.S. by Italian immigrants in the 1950s. They, they brought it over and... Um, made it their own. Mm -hmm. The recipe was first published in the New York Times in 1962. Mm -hmm. and around that long. 
it can be served over pasta or as a sandwich. Mm -hmm. I can see this as a sandwich. It's probably really, really good. So all I did was I put it into an egg wash. And then we have some panko breadcrumbs here, which panko is just a little bit coarser breadcrumb. Mm -hmm. And then we mix the little Parmesan in with it. And I'm going to go ahead and... We have good old olive I oil in that. here, which... Um, has a very... I'm going to say let her eat. All right. Stand back. Yes. <laughs> so we're just going to put that in. Oh, yeah. And let that start working. That'll cool it down. Yep. And then we just, we're going to cook it. We're going to finish it in the oven. So really with this, all you want to do is just get just a nice browning on the breadcrumbs. So we're going to put it into a pan after we get it nice and brown. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we're going to finish it off in the oven. So you can see it's, it is very quickly getting some color. These panko breadcrumbs start to color up pretty quick. And again, we're not looking for doneness. You know, because it will wanna, finish in the oven. It will finish in the oven because, you know, you do want to cook chicken to 165 degrees, like you said. We don't want any salmonella. <laughs> so, but look how pretty that just ends that up is, quickly. It comes out really, really quick. I could eat the top off of that right now. I know. <laughs> I know. So we're going to get that nice and brown on the second side. And so I, you saw so how quickly that came together. I know, I know. Dusting and then the egg wash and then the panko. And then we're going to go ahead and remove it from the oil and kind of check the other side. Make sure it's getting enough good color because we want it crispy. That's kind of the whole point of right. the farm. It's, it's nice and crispy. And it just marries with that, that, that cheese. So you're kind of so doing good. this in batches. Yes, you're going to definitely have to do it in batches. So oh, I can't it. wait to see this one. Yeah. So we're going to drain a little bit of the oil off of that bad boy. And we're going to put it into just a baking dish. And once we do that, we're going to start adding all the other pieces to it. So we have some tomato sauce. We have a little bit of basil. This is dried basil. You can also use fresh basil. And then we have some mozzarella cheese, which is going to be just gorgeous because, you know, this melts down nice yes, and indeed. stringy. And, and then we have a little provolone. And provolone's kind of got a little smoky flavor to it. So it's just going to be all kinds of depths. you got the Parmesan. you got the, the mozzarella, the provolone. So we're going to go ahead and cover it. Tell you what. Why don't we, before you're doing that, won't you throw mm -hmm. them gloves off? Oh. And you're going to have to try the old Bubba's chicken oh, sandwich. Oh, my goodness. Just to see. I'm going to feel like real Ascension Parish now. Yeah. With the original Bubba's. You know what they say, barn bread sandwich. and buttered. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Well, that's a nice looking. It is. It almost looks like a club sandwich. That's really pretty. The basic ingredients when that first come out and it was the greatest thing mm -hmm. ever. And... They That's wrapped so around a building selling that. I can imagine. But the key, y'all, really if you just if you just put that on that farm and you gotta mm -hmm. put some butter and you gotta put a little bit of extra seasoning. All right, y'all. Yes, she got indeed. the parmesan going. Mm -hmm. Got her mouth full. We got prosecco going. Y'all hang on, it's fixing to get better. All right, Carol. We winding down to the last mm -hmm. chicken, but we still got the good stuff coming. Okay. This is chicken wings, y'all, that I started doing probably twenty five years ago. And um it's just so simple. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is taking Uncle Larry's, seasoning it. So far, that's one ingredient or mm -hmm. two. Yeah. And then two count the chicken. Count the chicken. Count the and chicken. And then you're putting it in the oil. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you, the only other thing you're gonna do to this, let me let me kick it. Let me let me knock it around over here. This is almost done. Okay. Tiger sauce. It's Uncle Larry's mm -hmm. and tiger sauce. But mm -hmm. before we get to that, mm -hmm. why don't you taste All what right. we had last round? Okay. A little cordon bleu. Oh, yeah. This is nice. And I had some of that night, night before last somewhere mm -hmm. in there, and I'm going to tell you. Mm. That's good stuff. The, I, ham is, the ham is so good in there, and I love that Swiss cheese. The coating works so well. from the oven, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, when I ate that, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't eat enough of this. Cool stuff. We cool. need more of that in our life. More chicken. Yes, more indeed. chicken. Let's see where my timer's going. Look, here we are, right here. 
So all you did was you took three pounds of just the little wings and the drumettes. And all you got in there is Uncle Larry's. And that's it. Can it get harder than that? My goodness. Now. So what we're going to do. You got to drain it. Yep. I'm going to let you drain it a little bit. I'm going to start this last batch out over here right. while you talking about them. Alrighty, so I'm gonna borrow your tongs real quick. Sure. So I have a little tiger sauce in here. And this is tiger sauce. So it's not super hot. It's not super spicy, but it has a really good, it's almost like a sweet flavor. You can see when I move it around, it's a little thick. So it's really gonna hold on to that chicken, those chicken, those chicken wings. And we're just gonna put it in and we're just gonna kind of toss it around a little bit. Well, let me tell you a little bit about loaded. chicken wings. All right. It's, and they started as buffalo wings and this evolved. Yeah. Uh, an unbreaded chicken wing that is generally deep fried and then coated and dipped in sauce, mm -hmm. traditionally served with celery sticks. Okay. Lots of people claim to have started the chicken wings from 1948 to 1964. There's like six or eight people that's, yeah. they claim they done this, you know, or, or right. their cousin did it or something. Yeah. But they Let's think that was part of it. Frank Bellissimo of Buffalo, Frank Bellissimo of Buffalo proclaimed in 1977 that mm -hmm. July 29th is official chicken wing day. Okay. So I got to make sure I eat well, some on that, that day. <laughs> I've um, got to remember that. Um, some of the franchises that have um, emerged due to the popularity of wings mm -hmm. is a Buffalo Wild Wings started in 1982. Okay. I didn't realize they've been around that long. Hooters started in 1983. Okay. McDonald's sold Mighty Wings in the 90s. I don't oh, remember that I don't remember one. Those. I don't even remember. That I, must have been in Buffalo. I must have been. Mm -hmm. Domino's started theirs in 94. Okay. And Pizza Hut did it in 95 after they did. Gotcha. Uh, hot wings have three parts. It's your drumette, mm -hmm. your flat, or your um, flapper, or your pointer. Some people call it a little bit different. So it's three okay. pieces to the wing. Okay. So, I don't know why. It's just, it seems like, and maybe it's just me. I, I like the drum. I like the drumettes. I don't know. I why. really like that two bone flat. Oh, I, I like somehow, that. Somehow, if you oh. grab it in the right spot, Oh, you can just take, I've never You come out never with two that. bones in the yeah. end. That's it. <laughs> so these are coated in this tiger. And the tiger sauce has just got this umami flavor along with the heat. It's got like almost like a little sweet heat. It actually has anchovy paste in That's it. cool. That's so that cool. gives it that umami flavor. And you can see it just, it really does kind of cling to those wings and these things are really really crispy. I'm gonna tell you if you held yeah, your hand on there too long you might get bit. I know <laughs> but they're really really crispy so. So there's another cool recipe y'all. We that got one, one really more good. to go. What we say? Peach cobbler. Peach cobbler. Hang on. All right Kara. I'm gonna tell you what um I've had enough chicken to last the whole day and then I'll start tomorrow I'm with some start more. I'm gonna clucking. <laughs> I've had quite a bit myself. <laughs> Well, tell us the dessert. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. So this is my mama's peach cobbler, my mama Sue's peach cobbler. And my sister, I had forgotten all about this cobbler uh, when I moved down here. And my sister Hayden, you know, she's kept a lot of my mom's um, recipes alive. My mom passed in 2018. Oh, wow. So my mom always cooked Sunday dinner. She always had to have Sunday dinner. That's just how you raised in the South. You go to church, you come home and you eat good. You know, well, we didn't go out to eat. She cooked and every Sunday dinner had to have a dessert. So this, she made this a lot during berry season. So uh -huh. a lot of dewberries, you know, we had dewberries growing wild and we would, we would pick those and she would make those into a cobbler. Well, I'm just going to do a peach cobbler and peach is easy because you don't really have to put a lot of sugar in there's a lot of sweetness in the peach so I have a cup of flour and you can you can use self-rising flour but I included in the recipe if you don't have any self-rising flour you just add two teaspoons of baking soda I'm sorry baking powder ah. to your flour and then a quarter teaspoon of salt to it so I have that in here and I'm gonna add a cup of sugar that's why they call it a cup, a cup, a cup. Cup, a cup. Cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. And the other cup is the buttermilk. Is I'm using buttermilk. Now, my mom usually used whole milk, but buttermilk just adds like a, almost like a tang to it. And it, because this is an acid, 
And then you got the baking powder in there. It, it actually gotcha. gives a little bit of fluff. That's why buttermilk biscuits are bit. better than regular old milk there you biscuits. Go. And I'm add a little cinnamon. You can either put cinnamon on the top or you can add it. I just like to add it into the yeah. batter. It gives a little color. Gives a little flavor. This is just ground cinnamon. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the buttermilk. And this is just a cup of buttermilk. And I'm just going to get this friendly. Just While you're getting friendly. that friendly, I got a few cooking tips for you. All right. Um, you know, if you put a wet paper towel under your cutting board, it won't move around while you're trying to cut. Oh, I wish we'd have known that. We could have. We could have been doing that the whole save time. Save that up. <laughs> uh, when sautéing, you put the garlic in last. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Because it burns. Burn. Yes, and it's bitter when it burns. Exactly. So you do your sure. onions and your bell peppers and all that, yep. and then come in with your garlic. Uh, you add sugar to tomato sauce because it makes your flavor just a little bit richer. Oh, okay. I've often wondered why you add sugar to that. So it doesn't really make it sweet. It just brings out the tomato flavor. Okay. Black pepper, ground or cracked. All right. Ground black pepper is used for things like sauces because it's pretty strong. A little bit goes a long way. Yeah. Cracked pepper is what you're finishing up your dish with. Oh, on the table. With the grinder. Okay. Yep, yep. I gotcha. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies' night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. All right. I got the Tell taste. Me what you think. I got Tell the taste. Me what you let think. me let me see. Let me see. All right. You always doing the tasting, but I got. I know. Have yeah, you you taking my job. Uh, well, that's a good look. That's a good look. Get you. Yeah, got to get a little peach in there. I don't know. I, I think he's digging it. Y'all, I want to thank y'all so much for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and I hope to see y'all next time.